Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. All right, we're going to be looking at the properties of logarithmic expressions, okay? First of all, let's take a look at what happens when we have certain combinations of log values. Now, the first one is logarithms of products, okay? You notice that you have log of a base A of a product, two things being multiplied together, and if you see that, you can split it up. Notice it's log A and log A, okay? The base doesn't change, but you're going to have log base A of x plus log base a of y. All right, the reason why you would do that is because sometimes when you split it up like that, you take the product first and you turn it into an addition problem. Sometimes you can easier figure out that log value or that log value. So it might be a quicker way of coming up with an evaluation. All right, so again, the product becomes an addition problem. Let me give you an example. All right, if I was asked to expand this out using this property, I would say log base A of 2 times 3 is log base A of the 2 plus log base A of the 3. Okay, so if I knew for some reason um, log base A of 2 and log base A of 3, maybe it would be easier to do that. And then you add the answers together. Okay, now I know I don't know what A is yet, but the idea is we change this product into an addition problem. All right, next I have a logarithm of a power. So here we're taking log base A of a kind of a power here. What happens is that power gets moved to the front of that expression. So it's n times the log base A of the x of that base number, okay? So, for example, let's say you want to expand log base A of y to the third, all right? Well, using this property, the three exponent would come out in front, so it would be three times log base A of y, all right? So the exponent moves in front. And the last property here is the logarithm of a quotient. So you have log base A of two numbers being divided, okay? So they could be numbers or variables, by the way. So let's say that we have log base A of 6 over 13. All right, if we expand that out using this property, it would be log base A of 6 minus log base A of the 13. Okay, so division becomes subtraction, multiplication becomes addition, and a power becomes multiplication in the front. All right, let's try to keep all those in mind as I have you try these problems. All right, I'm going to keep these six problems on the screen, and we'll go through them here. But the first one we're going to look at in depth, and then the other five I'd like you to try on your own. So you pause the video, and then I'll walk you through it. So number 25 says log base 5 of, notice that, that is a combined product, okay? So let's take it one step at a time. So first of all, that's a product there, right? So that becomes the addition. So log base 5 of 7 to the fifth plus log base 5 of now it's 8 the square root of 8 which is really 8 to the 1 half power right we can go ahead and convert that alright so it's that part plus that part log base 5 alright then we're going to use the logarithm of powers so that 5 gets out in front so now it's 5 log 5 of 7 plus 1 half log base 5 
of 8. And instead of 1 half, I can go ahead and put it in the denominator there. Okay, so I hope you can read that. Now, it looks way more complicated than it started, but the idea, again, is sometimes we'll need to break these expressions apart and expand them. That's the idea here. We're learning those properties of logarithms. All right, pause the video and see if you can try these other five. Go ahead. All right, number 26. This is going to take a few steps to show you, but you notice how we have an outside power there, okay? That's an outside power. So let's go ahead and put that in front. So that's going to be the same as 3 log 6 of that expression. 2 squared plus, sorry, 2, two squared times 5. All right, so we move that outside exponent in that way. All right? Now, when we split this up, we're going to say 3 log 6 of 2 squared plus 3 log 6 of 5. And then as you can see by my final answer, I'm going to take that 2 exponent there and put it in front, which means it's now 2 times 3. And I hope you can follow that there. We have now this expression. Notice the plus there comes from that product there. Number 27. So we have an outside power here, a power of 2, and that can be in front. We can use that power rule. So 2 log 3 of 12 over 11 fifths. Okay? Then, because of this quotient here, I can split it up. So we have 2 log 3 of the 12 minus 2 log 3 of 11 to the fifth power. All right, now that one's going to be okay right there, but this fifth power gets in front there and now it becomes 10 log 3 of 11. All right, so here's my official answer. And I would just recommend you just kind of write it out in a bunch of steps and kind of break it apart. All right, number 28, log base 4 of that. Well, the outside 4 exponent gets in front. So now it's 4 log 4 of that product. I'm going to go ahead and put parentheses around it. And then we split it up because of the product here. So it's going to be 4 log 4 of u to the fourth plus the same thing, 4 log 4 of v. Again, here's the product, and it splits it up, becomes an addition problem. Now this exponent here can be moved to the front, and now it becomes a 16 in the front. So now we have 16 log 4 u plus 4 log 4 v. All right, how's that for a lot of symbols and variables? All right, let's look at the last two. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this um, expanding out these log expressions. Now, inside, of course, I have a product. I have the 11, the 6, and the 7 squared. Because it's a multiple product there, I'm going to split it up into addition. So it's this plus that plus that. All right, so we've got log base 5 of the first part, 11, right there. And then we have log base 5 of the 6, right there. And then we have log base 5 of 7 squared. And don't forget, you can move the exponent to the front. It becomes multiplication right there. So it's 2 log 5, 7. Okay? Hopefully that made sense there. Now this one, might have to write it out a little bit. We have a product here. We have the 7 squared times the third root of 12. All right? So here we have log base 3 of 7 squared. The 2 goes in front, so it's 2 log base 3 of 7. Hope you can follow that. Then this is going to be 12 to the 1 3rd power, right? So we're going to have log base 3 
of 12 to the 1 third power. Whoops, got off the screen there a little bit. Okay, move the 1 third in front, which actually makes a fraction of 3 in the denominator. So now it's log 3, 12, 1 third of that. And that's that part right there. All right, well, hopefully it's not too much of a mess. So it's just these three properties that you will have to remember. You know how to rewrite things as logarithms of products, addition, logarithms of powers, that's multiplication, and logarithms of quotients, which become subtraction. Thanks for watching and look for the next video in the series. It's all about condensing. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.